Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and the conclusion of our two-part study of the book of Revelation chapter 12 and we cover verses 10 through 17. The message is titled Satanic War on Israel and this is part two of two. Mark chapter 13 and we're going to see that the prophecies of Jesus tie in with this. We've already been showing you, if you've, watched, if you've been here uh, through the studies or if you watch them online, you'll see that every study we've pointed out where other prophecies from other books in the Bible match what we're seeing in Revelation 12. We see Michael standing up in Revelation 12. We saw Michael stand up in Daniel 12. That's one of the tie-ins. Here we see Jesus talking about this very same event. In Mark chapter 13, you also find this in Matthew 24. But we're going to read the account in Mark 13, beginning in verse 14. It says, But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Where did he speak of it? Daniel 9, 27. Standing where it ought not. That's, the, that's going to be the Antichrist standing in the temple, on the temple mount, declaring himself to be God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let him that readeth understand. What the Holy Spirit is telling you there is, if you read from Genesis to Revelation, you get familiar with the Bible, then when you read this, Daniel is going to come to mind. Thessalonians is going to come to mind. Revelation 12 is going to come to mind. He that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. You say, where's that? Petra, rock, mountains in the wilderness. This is talking about the same thing. And listen, you do the math. When the abomination of de desolation takes place, it is at the midpoint of the tribulation. How many years is the tribulation? Seven. What's half of seven? Three and a half. What did we just read in Revelation 12? Three and a half years. Same thing, same event, same time. The abomination of desolation takes place and at that same time is when God casts Satan out of heaven. And when God casts Satan out of heaven, Satan attacks Israel, and Jesus is telling you right here what's happening as Israel is attacked. He says, this is Jesus talking, and let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house. Now, Jenny saying, that's Greg right there. <laughs> that's not me, I'm, I'm gone. I was raptured. <laughs> but she's always, I'm always on the roof. You talk to people, she says, Greg's up on the roof again. And you know, I got that vertigo thing and I haven't been on the roof since. I promise. <laughs> but if you're up there on the housetop, now in, in Israel, in the ancient times, it's back to that way. It's still that way in Israel. Now in Jerusalem, they, they live up on the housetop. Uh, they sit up there and they hang out and they talk and they greet each other and they talk to one another and everything. And he says, when this takes place, don't even go into the house and grab anything. He says, just get out. Don't go in to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe, there's that word again, just as we read in Revelation 12. But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Lori, can you imagine having to run a hundred miles in your condition? I mean, my condition. <laughs> I couldn't do it. A woman who's with child... So what would we have? Well, Matt, you'd have to be carrying her on your back. 100 miles. That's what they're facing. And he said, you better go. Go, 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 go. Don't grab anything. Don't make any phone calls. Don't text anybody. Go, 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 go. And he says, woe to them that are with child to them that give suck in those days. And pray that... Uh, pray ye that your flight... Now, remember who he's talking to here. In Mark 13, he ain't talking to a single Gentile. He's talking to the Jews. And he's speaking prophetically of the day when the Jews would be in this situation. And he says, Pray that your, your flight be not in the winter, for in those days shall be affliction, look at that, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. That's a mouthful. 
And it matches Revelation 12. Continue. Look at this. Now, keep in mind, we just read where he said it'd be a time, times, and half a time. Three and a half years. He says, and except the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. That means he's put a limit on it. He put a time, times, and half a time. He made it three and a half years from this point, from the time that Israel is chased out of their country into Petra, three and a half years. Matches, Revelation 12, He hath shortened the days, Jesus said. It's a limited time persecution. But see, here's the bad thing is, they aren't going to know it. They don't know the Bible. They don't know the New Testament. And they're out there in the middle of Petra and they aren't going to know this. They're going to be desperate, in despair. If they knew God's Word, they'd know it's only three and a half years. And it's not impossible. Remember Daniel, when Daniel was taken captive in Babylon, he knew it'd be 70 years because he read Jeremiah. Know your Bible. Know your Bible. We just read where uh, it said it'd be a time, times... Remember back in verse 6? A thousand two hundred and three score days. And then we read that in two times in the chapter it tells you exactly how long it would be. And Jesus says He shortened the time. Matches right up. You ought to put footnotes in your Bible there when you read Mark 13. Remember to go to Revelation 12. Remember to go to Daniel 12. Run the references. So we continue in verse 15. Read the first part with me. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So here in the middle of this, Satan's been cast to the earth and he's coming after Israel. And it says that he, the serpent, Satan, cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Now, again, this could be a number of different things. Uh, one of the things that's interesting is that Satan's man will be in control of all the governments and the militaries. And this thing called harp, this exists out in the middle of Alaska. I want to tell you something very interesting. There have been high level military men who have come out and said that this thing called harp has caused a lot of the massive natural disasters. And what this does is they sh they're shooting up um, uh, radioactive uh, waves into the ionosphere to heat up the ionosphere. And they claim they're doing it to try to... Uh, some of you don't know what I'm talking about, but if you read about Tesla, Tesla had this idea of free energy. And uh, they, they're, that was a Tesla experiment. They're, they claim that they were running out here with HARP. And they uh, claimed that that was for communication purposes. But things, uh, documents have been leaked and others have come out and blown the whistle and said that they have used this to instigate natural disasters. China, several years back, went into the United Nations and in front of the world accused the United States of America of using this to cause that huge earthquake a few years ago in China. Did you see that on the news? Not very many of you would. It was barely reported, but you can find it. That it was an historic event that happened in the UN. There's uh, other ways that this could happen. They, they put a dam over there that if they bust that, the water could flood um, into this valley. And I think I got a picture of it here in a minute. But this, this is what a close-up looks like. It's just like these huge antennas that are used to shoot up these radio waves that cause the ionosphere to heat up. And that just doesn't sound good. <laughs> I don't know about you, but you know, it just doesn't sound smart. But it's an, what they call an ionospheric uh, research program jointly funded by the U.S. Air Force, U.S. Navy, the University of Alaska, and the Defense Advanced Research Projects uh, Agency called DARPA. And they've been in trouble in the past. You know about that. And... Uh, that if just keep that in mind, harp. Now, what, something that's interesting is some new accusations came out that harp had something to do with the Japanese tsunami. Uh, a few weeks after that, 
they closed HARP. And HARP has been closed now for a few weeks. And it's awful coincidental that that happened at the same time. And if that really can do what they say it can do, and Satan takes over and fills this man of sin that becomes the son of perdition, he would use it. Now, the verse 15 ends by saying that he cast the water as a flood after the woman who is Israel, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. At that moment, folks, Israel thinks it's over. They are running on their way, maybe in automobiles, trucks, or whatever. They're trying to get to Petra. And here comes this massive wall of water. And listen, Mariah could give you the link if you want it, but the Japanese tsunami was much worse than what you've seen on television news. And there are um, videos out there taken by Japanese folks who show this thing. And it is just incredible, the water coming up and just tearing through that. And it's just amazing to watch. These people are, and, and you watch the clip that Mariah can give you, I, you, you, you feel the, this ominous feeling for these people as you're watching it. You can just see they're dead. Something, how many thousands? Something like 15,000 died. It's just from a, that tsunami. And they're going to be in this area and yet this is going to happen. They think it's the end. Read verse 16. And the earth helped the woman. Now stop. I want you to read that again. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. What a coincidence that is. Because the people who hate Israel worship Mother Earth, and she's going to turn on them. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Big battle, Mother Earth. That battle axe. She's going to turn on us. They're worshiping her. Romans one. I mean, they, that's what that's what people are doing. I mean, they're worshiping the earth, and earth is going to open her mouth and swallow up the flood. So here are these people running, and yeah, how many of you have seen the disaster movies where there's a big flood and people are running and like, oh, you know? <laughs> well, you can picture that. And these people are running, and all of a sudden. They're just going to stop for a second and watch the water just go. <laughs> what was that? What was that? That's my Jewish imitation there. Someone might say, it was Mother Earth. Because <laughs> they're not believers at this time. What a miracle. Have you ever watched the miracles that happened when Israel became a nation and all the Arabs came down to kill them off? Miracles. Miracles. There was one uh, instance where these guys were all surrounded and the only way for them to get back to the territory they needed to get to was to go through a minefield. So they start to walk real slow and they needed to get there. They were going to get shot. Here come the Arabs. And they're like, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead. And all of a sudden... A mighty rushing wind, just like the book of Acts. And all of a sudden, the sand's blowing, and they can't see anything, and they're just sitting there like, oh, and, they, and all of a sudden, it just, and all of a sudden, it stops as soon as it started. And they look, and God had blown the sand off all the mines. And all they had to do is not step on one now. And they went walking in all the way over to the safety uh, area. I mean, story after story like that when the Israel went to war. That's what's happening here. Here's a picture someone drew. You got the dragon with the head spewing out the water. It may be that literal. <laughs> I can't tell you it's not going to be. And here, here's the water just going down into the earth. What do they call those? Um, sinkhole, yeah. Yeah, they're having them all over the place. That's coincidental. That's pretty wild. So verse 17 now, read that with me. And the dragon was wroth... Now, I want you to read that with me. This is the last verse. We're almost done. Wake up. All right, read it. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We're not happy about that. People say, you fundamentalist Christians, you're trying to spark Armageddon so God will kill off all the Jews. No, that's not... A, we simply believe what it says. 
We're not trying to instigate anything. We're not trying to make anything happen. We just believe what it says. And it says here that the dragon is going to be wroth and he's going to make war, but there's only a remnant left. There's only a remnant left. Of however many millions of Jews are around, only a remnant will remain. And Zechariah 13.8 tells us it's one-third. One-third. It shall come to pass, Zechariah prophesies this, that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Two-thirds are already killed. A third remain therein, and then they're kicked out, and they're running to Petra. That's the remnant. If you're a Jew, you believe the Gospel, you don't have to worry about that. If you're a Jew and you believe the Gospel, you will not be left to face that. But if you reject Jesus Christ as Jew or Gentile, you're going to face what we've been studying in the book of Revelation. And it closes by saying, this, the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And again, don't make tribulation salvation the same as your salvation or you'll go blind and stupid. I'm watching people all over the country who are going blind and stupid because they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. And it says right there that those who are saved out of Israel will be those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Everyone who's saved is saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, but not everyone who's saved is saved by believing and just being saved and born again the way you are now. Nobody before the New Testament was born again. Nobody in the New Test or the Old Testament before the New Testament, nobody back then was sealed under the day of redemption. Nobody. The psalmist prayed that the Holy Spirit would not leave him. You don't have to worry about the Holy Spirit not leaving you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit yourself. Nobody in the Old Testament was the temple of the Holy Spirit. People, they want to make everything the same for everybody else. During the tribulation, it's different. During the millennium, it'll be different. For a thousand years, you won't be saved by faith. It's impossible. You know why? Because He's right there in front of your face. <laughs> You'll be saved by sight. So don't make every age you read about in the Bible the same as you. And in this time, these people have kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So they are believing what they know up to this point. And that's law and faith. Law and faith. And that will then cause them to obey God and be saved. They will not take the mark of the beast. Why? Law and faith. This is a different dispensation. It is the end of the Mosaic Law or the covenant. The 70th week of Daniel that started in 445 B.C. ended in 32 and 33 A.D. And it starts again when the Mosaic Covenant is confirmed, Daniel 9.27, for the final seven years. Now listen, it's a fact. The 69 weeks of Daniel went from 445 B.C. up to the time of the death of Jesus Christ. And it does not start again until the Antichrist confirms the covenant, which we read about in Daniel 9.27, and that starts the final week of Daniel. A seven-year period. It's back under the law. There was a temple right up to the time Jesus resurrected, and then that veil was torn. There will be a temple again during this 70th week. There was no church in those 69 weeks. There will be no church of Jesus Christ during this 70th week. All these things come together and that should make you and I thank God. You are saved by grace through faith in the Gospel alone. You are not saved by works. You are saved unto good works. You are not saved by your own efforts. You are saved so that by faith you can be saved and now He can work in you and through you you work out your salvation. You do not work for your salvation. We work because we're saved, not to be saved. And you can thank God because right now, no one's trying to make you take the mark. And so you can't die and go to hell by taking the mark of the beast.
But in the great tribulation period, you can believe and make a profession and you take that mark, you will die and go to hell. Thank God you live where you live when you live. Thank God. I mean, I mean literally, thank God. Pray and say, thank you, Lord. I thank you for putting me where I... I you know, I, I don't live in those other times. I don't even want to know. You put me here. This is a great day to be alive. Exciting things going on. Amen, Jenny? And we live in a time of darkness where our little light will shine if you'll let it. And I think you only let it if you'll walk in this truth. If you will really grasp your eternal salvation, you will walk in a way that says to the world, I don't live for me. It's not about me. I live for Him. I want the whole world to know Jesus, not me. I don't want the whole world to know me. Right. I want people to know Jesus. I don't want them to know anything about me. I want them to know about Jesus Christ. You lay down your life. We must, as John Baptist said, Amen. is so true, we must decrease. Right. He must increase. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank You, Lord, for this study. And we thank You for the encouragement we get, but also the excitement seeing that we live so close to this time. Lord, I pray everyone in this room tonight will lay down their life and allow You to fill them with Your Spirit. Guide their steps. Guide their thoughts. Give them the knowledge and wisdom to know the direction You're giving them. And let us all live our lives just the way this uh, Scripture says, that we love our lives not unto the death. That we live for You completely. And may Jesus be glorified. And we thank You for Jesus and the eternal salvation He's won for us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I Amen. Can I bring up something, probably a point, a major one. Freddie and I were talking the other night. He said that this preacher, this Erwin Baxter, says that we Bible-believing pre- Tribulation. Y'all can stand if you like.
cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of Christ. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of Christ. Glory to His name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides. Visit our website at bbfohio.com for links to hundreds of audio and video messages, as well as articles, links, and other free resources, and a new bookstore being developed offering additional items. This message was brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship. I am Pastor Greg, and we thank you for listening.